I have a cat. Okay, you're going to think this is crazy, but I have a cat, and I put my cat in a stroller. Mm -hmm. And I take my cat everywhere with me in the stroller. Yeah, His name I is do. Cheerio. He's probably running around my house right now. And I've taken him to the grocery store, to the mall, to a dog park. Oh, we are. Welcome, everybody, to Trevor Talks Too Much, show where I talk to cool people, bring them on, talk to them, have a little convo, see if they think I'm cool. Maybe they want to be friends or something. I don't know. That's the goal. I want to make friends. Sue me for wanting more friends. I'm your host, Trevor Everts, master baker, mythical soft boy, and proud holder of a Top Golf membership card. Shout out to golfers out there, golfies, um, today. Had a lovely conversation with Leah and Sarah Talabi, the Talabi twins. Uh, they are models. They are social justice advocates. Uh, they make really cool films and stuff. I don't know. They do so much cool stuff. They're very talented, very awesome. They have their own nonprofit. Um, and it's just amazing. They're doing humanitarian stuff. It's awesome. We talked about all sorts of stuff. We talked about goat yoga. Okay, goat yoga, but you never heard of that. L listen if you want to find out what it is. Uh, we talked about reminiscing about the taste of our childhood, like Gogurts. Everybody loves Gogurts. I love Gogurts. Nothing like splooge and goo in your mouth. It's my favorite Saturday activity. Uh, and some activism that they're involved in on a regular basis, which is really awesome. It was a great conversation. We had a great time. Um, Jamie, I came to a very shocking realization this past weekend. Oh, yes. Please a do tell. Very, very shocking. So I... Uh, my high school basketball coach, who was my basketball coach, my freshman and sophomore years of high school, a uh, great family friend, um, him, his wife, and he has three kids. Uh, and I've known his kids. They're all now in like high school, junior high. So I knew them when they were a lot younger, like in elementary school. Um, and he was down with his family. They were vacationing down in Southern California, uh, cause they live up the coast a little bit. Um, and freaking these kids told me that they listen to my podcast. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And they told me that they started listening to Ailstorm <laughs> because of me. <laughs> uh, and is Ailstorm age appropriate for... It's fine. I think I, so. Some of the songs are not. Some of the songs are... I don't know. But the shocking realization that I came to is that I have influence on people that are young. The youth. <laughs> the youth of America. The youth of the nation. I haven't, they, they listen to what I say sometimes, which is horrifying. <laughs> if you're out there listening to me talk right now, don't, <laughs> I mean, listen to the show. I want you to listen to the show, but don't take my advice on anything. I don't even know if I've ever given advice on the show. If I have, don't listen to it. I'm stupid. Okay. I'm dumb. I'm a dumb, stupid person. Okay, and I am scared about the fact that there are people there that listen to what I have to say, uh, young minds that I could be molding, perverting. <laughs> I don't know. It was just weird. No, that's weird. It, 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 it's weird. You know, my friends listen to the show. My parents listen to the show, you know, the, and that's not weird to me. But the fact that someone whom I respect and care about, uh, my old basketball coach, who I think is a very great person, he has children and I could be. They, they, I, they, I, they listened to the show. What have I said? Have I ever said anything incriminating? No, we did talk about the law once, but it was like more about matter of factly than about breaking things in the law. We talked about the law just one time. Well, that's like good. It's like educational. Yeah, it was educational. So I we think talked about quartering. Dumb amendment, by the way. Why do we still need it? Write it out. <laughs> it's useless. Get rid of it. We got all these, why do we need so many amendments? Keep the useful ones in, but the ones that, quartering? Well, no, because if they write it out, they probably take advantage of that and do bad things, so that's probably why it's an amendment. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm saying, though. I just told the people <laughs> to get rid of an amendment that benefits normal people. There could be a kid out there listening right now to this that's like, that's right. Quartering is a stupid, the, the, that's a dumb amendment. They could be thinking that they should get rid of it. <laughs> this is the problem. This is the freaking problem. They're, 
Ah, I'm having an existential crisis right now about the fact that I could be influencing young minds. Just use it for good. How? I'm stupid. Uh, well, I'm losing my freaking mind. We, you know, this seems, I know there's a lot of existential dread going on in your head right now, but we could just also go into the show and then maybe you'll feel better at the end of the show about it. Okay. I'm sorry. I have nothing else to say. Nothing else. We'll just I'll just roll the tape. I'm sorry. Roll the tape. <laughs> Everybody, welcome Sarah and Leah Talabi. Hello. Hey, hey Talabi twins. <laughs> the Talabi twins. Welcome to the show. Um, introduce yourselves, please, to the people. Sure. Well, I'm Sarah. I'm Leah. We also go by the Talabi twins. Usually, it takes people a while to differentiate between the two, but we're very understanding. Because, you know, we're twins. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you have that, Um. do you have the, the like, twin connection? Oh, yeah. Totally. Like, to be honest with you, like, she'll be like, are you thinking what I'm thinking? I'm like, yeah, I'm thinking what you're thinking. Yeah. Let's get pizza or something. And then we're just go get pizza. Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> she's thinking the same I'm thinking all the time. Twin <laughs> telepathy is a real thing, at least for us. I can't speak for other twins, but we are always, like, on the same frequency. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of scary because we answer questions at the same time, like, not even doing it on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> we can't yeah. control. <laughs> it's like, uh, you, have you seen 22 Jump Street? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like those twins that are across the hall uh, from... Jonah Hill and uh, yeah. Channing Tatum and they're all they like say the same thing at the same exact time it yeah it's a lot. scary yeah. yeah I have a brother and I feel like we're on the level that Jonah Hill and Channing Tatum are on in that movie where they try and say the same thing and they're just like pizza and Ch- and then yeah whatever where they're just not connected at all that's me and my brother so sadly we don't have a we just also fight a lot like them maybe my life is 22 Jump Street I, I love that movie though. Like, I mean, like we did. It's, it's so good. <laughs> they need a twenty third Jump Street. Like yeah. at this point, like come on, it's been a couple years. Right? Yeah, they need to do like fifteen more of them. I want, I want, I want to get to like forty seven Jump Street. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're right. so good. They're so funny. I rewatch them all the time. <laughs> Honestly, that's my go-to. Like, you know, it's like midnight, and I'm just like, what do I want to watch? Yeah, twenty one, twenty two Jump Street. Yeah, Why not? Or for the Millers. Like, for the Millers too. That's yeah. pretty that's a good the lottery watchability there. Yeah. Uh, have you ever played what's like the funniest twin prank you've ever pulled on anyone? Oh gosh. Have you ever done like a body swap thing where one of you pretends to be the other? Yes, we have gone on a date with so we actually went on a date one time and I wanted her to check out this guy for me. So I had been on one date and I was like, you go for me and check out this guy. So she's like, wait, hi. I'm like, well, I just want to make sure he's like legit and like really like me and all, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I put her on like to like, look like me, which she already does. So it's pretty easy. Yeah. And she goes on the date and literally the guy did not know. And I'm like, I'm not about to date someone that can't tell the difference between us. Yeah. And, and you know what I'm saying? Like, how is that ever going to work in this relationship? Yeah. <laughs> He was calling her Leah and everything. Like, oh, Leah, la, la, la. Like, I had such a, such a good time tonight. Like, thank you for coming out with me. And it just was like that. I just didn't talk to him after that. It's, a, I was like, it's a good way to test people's, <laughs> like, truth, truth ability. Right. I don't know if that's a word. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. That is so funny. So did you, did he know that you had a twin sister? He did, but, like, he didn't ever think, think that use it against her. right like, use it, who would who would think that you know what i'm saying so you can always just if you want to check someone out send the other twin like you know what i'm saying <laughs> that's so great oh my god this makes me want a twin just to prank <laughs> just for the prank value just to prank people so much it, it's value. so <laughs> funny like it was the funny it was just cool to like experiment and try it because we had never done it before but like all the time people would confuse us for each other so yeah. i was like go on a date with this guy. And he only met me like twice. So like he yeah. didn't know because if he did, he probably would have like knew something was off and he really <laughs> did not know. Like this guy legit thought it was me on the date. <laughs> oh my goodness. And you got to be thinking like, there's no way this guy, like I went on a date with him. He has to like think something's up maybe. Right. 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 And he did wow. like legitimately did not. And I was like, okay, like you guys, you don't know me that well. Yeah. yeah. Like- well, yeah. Thank God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Being a twin is just a living prank. I mean, you don't have to try, and you just walk. 
pull and confuse people and just people like gawk at you like and then you get so asked a hundred times are you guys twins it's like no we just look alike for fun like we just dress alike for fun yeah, like we're not yeah. really twins or anything yeah, yeah. no it's, it's like always just it's just funny <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness that's great i i would love to pull a prank like that on someone I, I don't know what it is. I just want to like body swap someone. I feel like it would be so funny. I know. You gotta find your doppelganger. Yeah, I don't know what I'm saying that right. But like, <laughs> find your doppelganger out there and like switch bodies or places with him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, okay. So a lot of people tell me I look like some different celebrities. So let me get your, what, first off, before I say any names, what celebrity do you think that I most look like? I, you give me a little bit of like, Mark Zuckerberg and Sheeran. I know that's so random. I just feel like if they would like combine, that's if you. they had to really do that's you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, okay, so I'm wearing a hat right now. I get um I get Eddie Redmayne a lot. Cause when my hair is out and about, it's very curly and like poofy. Um I look like him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I get some Eddie Redmayne. I weirdly have gotten Sean Mendez in the past, which I was like, that's a huge compliment. Yeah, yes, I was gonna the say hair that. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. If they had a baby, it'd be you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll take it. I'll take it. That's good. That made me happy. <laughs> I just gotta get Sean Mendez on the horn and see if he wants to do a, a prank. Body swap. As soon as I start singing, though, people are gonna know. <laughs> Friday or um, music video by Chris Brown, where like he switches bodies. And he's like, I was freaking fried. I know, I know. <laughs> that is one of my favorite songs. I listen to that song at least like once a week. It is so funny. Definitely our guilty pleasure. I feel like we're always just playing it. People are like, stop playing that already. Like, it's so I cringy. love it. And the music video and everything. Like, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Lil Dicky is so funny. I know. <laughs> he is. He's one of the funniest people ever. Another favorite of mine by him is Lemmy Freak. Uh... You haven't heard Lemmy Freak? No. <laughs> I would sing it right now if I could, but I can't. Um, <laughs> not because I physically can't, but because of copyright issues or whatever. <laughs> uh, check it out, Lemmy Freak. You're not gonna, you're gonna want to not stop listening to it. It's so good. I think we should make a music video. Like that would be cool. Like I want to make a music video. Yeah. Like I just always want to be in like a Parent Trap reboot. I know yes. we've done a few like TikToks where we like do all the Parent, the parent Trap, trap Like we did like the whole Parent Trap, like all the TikToks. But I like I feel like we should do the reboot. Or that something. would be cool. <laughs> yeah. Do it. Why not? I I'm on board. I'll vouch for you. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, so you, you started your kind of modeling career and everything at 16, right? Pretty, pretty young. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We always kind of had a passion for it and everyone's like, are you a model? So I was like, you know, we should just be models. And you know, also being twins too. Yeah. Like, brands love that honestly. And like a lot of brand campaigns, like just love that they can have two of the same, you know, two, two of the, the price of people. one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, that's been fun, and we, we love that. We love it, so. Yeah. What, what was it like starting your career at such a young, like, going to high school and also doing, you know, modeling and stuff like that? I feel like we didn't tell people. Like, we were kind of, like, it, we didn't, we kind of kept to ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> because we didn't want people, people to, People like, just knew us as those twins. Like, oh, yeah. you guys are, like, those twins I see in the hallway. Like, yeah. oh, okay. Like, <laughs> yeah, because it was just... I don't know. You don't want people to like take it the wrong way or kind of like start thinking you're just like living this high life or something. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, I'm just a normal person. I'm just you and me. Exactly. Like I just have a twin who walks around who looks just like me. Yeah, Nothing exactly. crazy. Oh my gosh. Did you go to like a big high school or was it somewhat, was it a thing like where everybody kind of knew everybody? I think it was kind of where everyone knew everyone. Like, everyone had their own little, like, group and everything. And, like, we were just on, like, our own group. Like, I yeah. wasn't really in any group. Yeah. <laughs> I was just chilling on my own the twin group. group. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Two-member group here. Two hey, members. who else do you need, right? Exactly. Uh, that's, that's so funny. I, um, I went to a pretty small high school. And so I understand, like, the whole everybody knows everybody and everybody knows everything that's going on in your life. Yeah. This is the craziest thing. I swear the amount of times in high school where I heard someone say something and like, I, I barely even, that's still fresh in my mind. How did, how did you even hear about that? Exactly. Right. And we're from Detroit. So we're from like the country country. You were like, like, nothing happens over there. Yeah. It was 
the suburbs. Cause the it's suburbs. More like, yeah, yeah, we weren't even like in Detroit. Not we were, like, like the city. Like still the away country from Detroit. Town. <laughs> country, country. Like you go see cows when you drive yeah. out of your neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. Oh, trust me. I know. I'm from Idaho. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It's like the same thing as Detroit. <laughs> potatoes. Michigan, They're like known yeah. for potatoes. We're known for like cars and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. So you, you, along with modeling, um, you do a lot of activism and you actually started a production company with your mother, right? Changemakers Productions? Yes, we did. Oh my gosh. We, we stay busy. I mean, we have like a nonprofit organization. We have Changemakers, which is really just like trying to do good in the world. You know, we're doing this with our mom, trying to do good in the world, try to like make Amplify the world a better place. Voices. <laughs> I mean, come on, like just try to, try to make the world a better place. Like that's what we're out here doing. And, um, we love it. <laughs> That's so awesome. I love that. I read a little, I read about y- the production company and stuff um, and what you do. If you want to speak more to that, I would love for you to tell everyone about it because I think it's really cool, but you'd probably do a better job of explaining it than me. Yeah. So basically we have Changemakers Productions and we write, we produce, we host, we direct, like we're just across the board, um, just creating content, like different types of series. We do series about you know civil rights activism human rights just amplifying humanitarian crises across the board we're currently doing like a series in production about africans in ukraine and just like the different refugee situations in ukraine and we've done like the police reform type of documentary we did in 2020 so we try to to amplify people in these um just different issues in society that you know need to be heard. and we make it into like these short form videos that like because yeah. people have a short attention span like yeah. people say that the, the average person has the attention span of a goldfish. Yeah. Okay. So, so we try to make it short videos. and like kind of targeted towards Gen Z because like you know people think like oh I'm young like what can I do and so for a long time I thought that and then I started like learning and doing research and I was like hey like I can do something now like I'm young but I can yeah. still like start making a difference and yeah I think that like it's so good to like inform the Gen Z generation that like hey like you really can start doing something even yeah. if it's small like speaking up like you really can make a difference in this world so. yeah and we're we're building out actually like a Gen Z news outlet and that's and basically what we try to do is bring you know news about current events and about different political and social issues just like what's going down in the world because I mean not a lot of Gen Z is like sitting there watching Who watches the news, like the news with their all parents, the time so but it's still so important for like us to know <laughs> so so I don't even like watching the news that much because it's just like so much and it's yeah. like so intense and I'm like I wish someone would just like sum it up for me in like a right. 10 second sum video it up in 60 you. seconds and then the links with like how we can help or what we can yeah. do yeah and like we took upon ourselves to create that so that's what we have on instagram tiktok um and youtube shorts and i mean yeah then we're just we're continuing to scale we we're continuing to scale like our news outlet and our production company and our nonprofit and the projects and so we're just gonna like keep trying to going. make a difference yeah <laughs> you know we're just gonna keep it going so it's exciting <laughs> that's so awesome i i love to hear that i mean you're right. It is. Everybody has such a short attention span. I mean, look at Vine and TikTok, like the right. two biggest Gen Z, like social media kind of viral things of our generation. And it's all just sound bites, sound bites, sound bites. I mean, I don't watch the news. It's like exhausting. It's yes. exhausting. It's too much. Yeah. Fast paced world. And, like, People want to see stuff in like 10 seconds or less. Like yeah. that's just how our world is. Now, exactly. You know? That's so awesome. What uh, what ins- did, did anything inspire you to kind of create that like kind of social media activism? Was there anyone that you looked up to or is that something that you kind of just decided you wanted to really go all in on? Well, I think obviously our mom, you know, she's such an Mama. inspiration for us. <laughs> and we, we, you know, we founded this nonprofit and like every project we could like consult with her and she, you know, takes part in it. So definitely our mother. She's like she's, our best friend. She's like, such a leader for and... Us and- she was a single mother. Um, you know, we grew up with a single mother. So, like, you know, she was just so supportive and, like, such a strong woman. It, like, really just inspired us. Exactly. So, so I, I cannot, like, take away from, like, she's everything and definitely a huge inspiration to us. But honestly, just, like, watching the news, watching how the world unfolded, you know, and just with, like, women's rights. And then just in 2020 with civil rights activism and just watching how all of this just unfolded like we couldn't just sit back like we've Mm -hmm. always been very um 
like passionate people and people who just want to like go out there and make a difference. Like we were, we can't, I can't just watch something and like not do anything right. about it. Like I felt like even if I just can in any way, like how can I help? Even if it's just donating like $5, like I, we, we always wanted to just like do something. And so we just, it just started with an idea. And we just kept building on it. We, we just started we talking about, it and yeah, got no, it we going. just started like talking on social media about like our, you know, about bringing awareness to like mm-hmm. the social justice issues in the world. And it just kept growing. And then we're like, hey, like, let's build out a production company. Like we're all, we're producing documentaries and we're producing shows anyway. And we're producing all this stuff for social media. Let's build a production company. And then let's do, let's create like a community of people, um, like a social media community and website where people can find resources for like, you know, social justice issues. And if people are interested, they have this, this resource hub. And that's where our nonprofit idea for intersectionality for feminists came, came along. And I know that sounds like a super long, weird term, but it basically she uses big words a lot. <laughs> people who want to good in the world and believe in the equal rights of all people, regardless of their, um, you know, minority group, regardless of the identity that they belong to, and then women's rights. So just all people's rights. If you're interested in that, like you are an intersectional feminist, and you get to carry that super cool title. Boom. If you agree <laughs> in that, agree with that, and then that's um, what our nonprofit's about. And mm-hmm. we created this community and this resource hub where people can find materials and where we're creating videos and people, you know, can find out and do something that's Mm -hmm. because that's what we wanted to do and I know a lot of people do have that like you know urge and that in that wanting to just do something and not knowing where to go or how and so we're we're like trying to be the messengers that are like hey this is how we didn't know either we didn't know how to help um and he we're gonna show you how so that's what we're like bringing to people we are we're just trying to be messengers here and you know like bring bring this stuff to people yeah that's so great. That makes me so happy to hear because honestly, I've spent a lot of time on social media. I mean, you know, we're in that generation that grew up on it that that has had, you know, the internet at our fingertips forever. And it is just a cesspool of crap so often. There's so much bad stuff and it's just not adding any value to the world whatsoever. Uh, so it just makes me very happy to hear that, you know, there are young people out there that want to make a difference. Or on TikTok watching someone like cook or like do crazy pranks. And I'm like, you know, I should probably be watching something like beneficial. I mean, I do like the cooking and stuff, but like something beneficial too, you know what (laughs) I'm saying? Well, we're going to be on social media anyway. Like our generation is going to be on social media. We basically live there. So like we might as well take a few, you know, social media just while we're on there, like do something good, learn something good, you know, contribute to making the world a better place. We're going to be there anyway. Right. So Yeah. It's so cool to see how, you know, people have like use the internet and use different things on the internet to help. Like, I mean, you know, 15 years ago, the idea of doing like a charity stream on Twitch was not a thing. You know, you have these people that are like, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to sit in my room and play video games. People are going to watch me play video games and it's going to raise money for a good cause. And it's so cool to see how that kind of, you know, like awareness has evolved over time and how, the internet is being used in new and cool ways to help people and to spread good messages and positivity. It's true. Like there's so many more. I mean, honestly, like everyone can contribute nowadays. Yeah. Like we, if you have a phone, like you can do something, you can do something good. You can make the world a better place. Like if you hear about a current event and something that you want to be, you know, do something about it like you can do something about it if you have a phone there are so many different ways now like there's no excuse now uh, with the social media and we spend so much time on our phones like i forgot what the study was but people spend like an average of like six hours on their screen and that's not even millennial that is so So long gen z (laughs) is probably even longer i can't even stare at something for six hours and the fact that i'm doing it on my phone is like crazy (laughs) So six hour stirring contest. With the- yeah, I, I definitely have taken a step back from I've, I've been trying to recently just like not spend as much time on social media, specifically like Twitter and Instagram, because I don't really go on TikTok super often, but I, I just spend so much time on social media so often and it just drains you. It's so awful. Like I just feel tired after scrolling on my phone and it's so ridiculous. Yeah, 
I, I'll do that too. I'll be scrolling and I'm like, I'm tired of scrolling. So I'll go to another app and then like, I just come back to it. Like it's a habit. Like it's yeah. literally like an addiction. And like, yeah. I honestly probably Sometimes, need to take like, a Sometimes like you break. don't want to be even You don't even want to be there. So I'm like, I'm tired of scrolling. Like I, I'm, mm-hmm. this is not exciting. But then I'll go to another app and then five seconds later, let me go back to Instagram, scroll some more. And I'm like, I don't even want to be here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Have you ever done the thing where you close Instagram or Twitter and then immediately open it back up? Who yeah, I've done, done yeah, that. I, I've done that. Yes. <laughs> like I'll switch from Twitter to Instagram and then I'll close it and just instantly click on Instagram again and open it back up. The scariest part is like, I'll like be like, oh, let me go like look up this brand. Like I want to go buy some shoes or something. And then I go back to Instagram and there's an ad for those shoes. I'm like, were you listening to me? Like, were you, what, what is going oh, on here? Oh, they definitely like, were. What is go- how did you know that? Up to something. He always <laughs> is. He yeah. Did. I test that sometimes. I'll just start talking randomly about <laughs> products to see if I can get them to pop up. Just be like, hmm, I'd love a new pair of jeans. Right? <laughs> and then I scroll on Instagram, see if there's an ad for jeans. Exactly. I feel that. And I get like kind of creeped out about my camera. Like sometimes I feel like they're watching me. And I've actually still saw this before. Mark Zuckerberg puts tape over his camera. So if he's doing that, like be doing that because I really feel like they sometimes are watching us not even gonna lie like I won't even like change by my phone because I don't want like them watching me like I don't know if I'm like crazy or whatever but like I'm just saying just saying No, you're not crazy. I think they probably are watching us, but I don't know. A long time ago, I resigned myself to the fact that they're going to do it. It's going to happen. I don't care anymore. (laughs) They can watch me if they want. I'm not embarrassed. Ah! Whatever FBI agent is out there looking at me through my camera. Enjoy the show, pal. Enjoy the show. (laughs) Just text me if you really want to my life yeah. like, it's not that interesting not i just that eat all day and watch netflix yeah. not that interesting <laughs> oh goodness he pr- my fbi agent probably hates me he's probably <gasps> like this dude is so stupid <laughs> stop telling dumb jokes <laughs> oh i drop my phone all day so probably half the time they're just seeing the yeah floor, I'm dropping my phone like all the yeah, time and so true. i've dropped it in water i've dropped it in a toilet so like <laughs> if you're watching that i'm sorry like i really am sorry because that yeah. was an accident Whoever on, on, yeah, Facebook or Mark's Sorry about that. watching, like, <laughs> it's a crazy show, so. <laughs> um, you, I'm sorry, this is going to be a quick switch up here, uh, but I heard something about, something that you do called rage yoga. Oh, rage yoga. Talk to me about that. I have done goat yoga. Goat <laughs> yoga? Where baby goats, like, walk around you while you do yoga, and it's supposed to be, like, peaceful. So they like walk on you. Yeah, yeah. And you like pet them as you're like stretching. Yeah. And it's like really cute. And so they like start like trying to eat your clothes and stuff. Yeah. Like the one started like nibbling on my pants and I'm like, oh, okay, this is cool and all, but my pants aren't that tasty. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's actually fun. <laughs> it is kind of cute though. Jamie, yeah. look up the nearest goat yoga place. <laughs> I want to go. That sounds like the greatest thing ever. <laughs> Is it? It yeah. was really cool. Not a bit. They kind of stunk though. Like it was like I'm like, oh, this is cute and all, but you guys kind of smell. Yeah. Like no, but it's becoming like a thing. It's like, really I see a people thing. on Instagram all the time going to go yoga. I think they have pig yoga too. Like do they, they have pig I, yoga? I'm now? pretty sure I've seen pig. Not gonna lie. So like that's cool. I mean, there's a pig island somewhere in the world too. So <laughs> I mean, <laughs> who comes up with this stuff? Like you know what? We've got yoga, very meditative, you know, stretching your body out, you know, using your muscles, limbering up. But what if we added goats? <laughs> yeah, it's like, where does this come from? Like, let's just add goats to this. I think yeah. this would be a good idea. Yeah, people like, would totally come if we just added goats to our yoga. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then, then and this is like a go. legit thing. And people, but there was like <laughs> fat bunnies there too. They had these like cuddle bunnies. They were called cuddle bunnies. And they were ginormous bunnies. Like, I've never seen a bunny that big in my life. And it was, like, just squishy. And you just wanted to, like, squish it. And they just sat in the shade while the goats ran around and why the people do yoga. Like, (laughs) it was pretty cool. Not going to (laughs) lie. I need this. I need this so bad. Yeah. I've got so much tension. Right? It's oddly very relaxing. It was relaxing. Because I feel like it makes you get your mind, like, off yourself. Yeah, because so, if there's like animals involved, then you can't just like let your mind wander while you're doing. Yeah, yoga. you're like, like, I have a goat here. I need yeah. to focus on the goat. And exactly. Be peaceful. Yeah. <laughs> I need it. Thank you for introducing me to that. That's 
up, Google it. I mean, there's tons of classes. Yeah, I took my grandma too. She loved it. So, yeah. I mean, it's a great. <laughs> it's a freaking game changer. I think Jamie just sent me a link. Burbank, California goat yoga events. Oh, <laughs> let's go. I am yeah. down. Let's go. Yeah. Like, I'll take my grandma with us. She's all cool and everything. She's, yeah. She's cool, no, so yeah, definitely. Let's go. <laughs> They're fun. My girlfriend would love that. <laughs> she would. She loves animals. Yeah. No. It's, that would be so much fun. It is amazing. Like I'm totally being honest. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to tell her to not listen to this episode so that she's surprised. And I'm going to be like, hey, we got plans. Yeah. Don't wear, wear comfy athleisure clothes. <laughs> We're going to goat yoga. Yeah. Yeah. You always have to watch, though, like if the goat obviously like goes to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, they that's, were trying to eat my clothes. I don't know why clothes would be tasty. That's to a the goat, only thing like, that's potentially not relaxing. It was my clothes were Lululemon, so maybe they thought it tasted like lemon. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I think goats just like to eat stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Cor- correct me if I'm wrong, Jamie, but I think they just eat stuff. They just. I could be wrong. I don't know much about goats, but. Like before in my past they, life, or something, because I just like to eat stuff. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. We We've got- all got a little goat in us. Yeah. <laughs> oh goodness. I can't stop thinking about it. now I'm just a ima- I'm like my head is I'm at goat yoga. In my head I'm at goat yoga. I've like astral projected yeah. to stretching my body out next to a bunch of baby goats. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's I can't a like stop thinking about it. experience that everybody needs to experience. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I definitely do. I want to do the pig one too. Like I wonder what other animals can I be know. incorporated into this thing, like a little farm little cows like i would like cat yoga because i love cats yeah. so i would love cat yoga i feel like that'd be great that would be I'm waiting for someone to, to start that <laughs> maybe jamie write this down <laughs> capybara yoga oh yes oh. i love capybaras that's like one of my favorite animals they would be great at yoga <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh for real they've got to have that somewhere it's a great business idea, like waiting to happen. Someone yeah, needs we to should do it. Should be like farm yoga though. Like we should have like pigs, cows, yeah. goats. Like yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like just mix it all together. Rabbits. Oh, have a whole farm. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, I feel like I would get too. I probably wouldn't do any yoga. I I would get too distracted by the yeah. animals. I see an animal and I cannot help myself. Literally before this, before you came on the show. I was making myself the tea that I was drinking earlier and one of uh, my coworkers had a dog and I swear I just pet this dog for like 15 minutes because I was like, and then I was like, I got to go do the podcast show. I can't <laughs> sit here and pet this dog all day. <laughs> That's I like, just love animals. I'm out and about when I see a dog and I'm like running across the street for it, yeah. like going to pet it. Like yeah. I literally, I have a cat. Okay, you're going to think this is crazy, but I have a cat and I put my cat in a stroller mm-hmm. and I take my <laughs> everywhere with me in the stroller yeah, his name is do. cheerio he's probably running around my house right now and i've taken him to the grocery store to the mall to a dog park i've taken my cat to a dog park because he loves animals and the dogs will go up there put him in his little stroller and he's just all looking at him and he's not scared like this cat is so brave i'm totally for real and like he's just enjoying himself like why should the cat be stuck in the house all day like he wants fresh air too like a dog like Come on. Our cat has a good life. It gets pushed around everywhere in the stroller. Everywhere. <laughs> yeah. To Even though it's not store. a baby anymore. <laughs> it wants fresh air, okay? So I just take it everywhere. And so why not? Yeah. That's so cute. Oh, I want to see your cat in a stroller. That's so cute. <laughs> I've talked about my snake on the show before, so the people don't need to hear more about Meatloaf, but ah! I don't take him anywhere. You could put him in a stroller because I took my cat ball and the lady was like, you know what? People brought their parrot before. People put their rabbit in a stroller yeah. before. She's like, I've seen it all. So, I mean, you could why put not a snake in a stroller yeah. and take it out, you know? Hey, why not? I want to put him up my sleeve and then act like a wizard. Like I cast a spell and then he slithers out of my sleeve. <laughs> yeah. Scare some people. I, I think you could also put him on your neck, though, and like have him just like chill there. Yeah. Like, you know, like chilling on your neck if I'm going out. I've seen people do that. Yeah, actually. I have seen people do that. Yeah, down on Hollywood Boulevard, sometimes there's people with snakes out there that like offer them up for pictures to like tourists. They'll just have a big snake on their neck, like five dollars to take a picture with the snake. You just can't. Hollywood exactly. Boulevard's got it all. They, have, <laughs> they have seen everything there. <laughs> yeah, I, I honestly, 
I try not to go to Hollywood Boulevard. I try to avoid it, but sometimes I end up down there and it's a lot. It is. A lot. It is so entertaining. I mean, I've got mixtapes like every couple steps. Like, hey, do you want to buy my mixtape? Do you want to buy a mixtape? I'm like, um, I'm good. I got SoundCloud. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Spotify premium. I'm not really in need of any new stuff. It is crazy. It is a show. And then you there. get home and the mixtape's like a blank CD. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that before, like where they buy them and it's just a blank CD. And it's like, okay, cool. I just bought a, someone's mixtape and it's a blank CD. Yeah. Nope. I don't even know if I have a CD player in my car. Yeah, right. I, we right. don't. I yeah. can see a record because records are cool and like vintage, but like a CD, like what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think I could tell you the last time I physically held a CD and put it in something with the intention of playing it. Yes. Oh, I know. I I actually was cleaning up my house, and I have all these old movies I used to have as a kid. Like I used to have like Big Fat Liar, like Aladdin, like all of them, and they were all on CD. And I just like took them out and VHS, and I was like, oh my gosh, like this feels so ancient. Like this this is crazy. I remember as a kid like putting it in the like the DVD player and like just watching it so casually. Like and now it's just so weird to do. You know. You remember rewinding the VHS tapes? Once you got done, you had to rewind it all the way back. That's crazy. All the American <laughs> Ashley movies. You used to like watch all of them. <laughs> Get all the whole collection on VHS. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I had a lot of Disney movies on VHS, and anytime I wanted to watch one, I would always get irritated if the person that watched it before didn't rewind it. Yeah. But it was probably me. <laughs> Dude, you remember, like, the tape would come out? Like, there would be tape in the VHS, and, like, the tape would sometimes come out? Like, I remember my dad got so mad one time I somehow pulled the tape out. He's like, you're pulling, you're ruining it. You're <laughs> pulling the tape out. I'm like, I'm sorry. I was a kid, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> I th- I'm pretty sure I did the same thing. I'm pretty sure I ruined like multiple VHSs because I just had no clue what it was. I thought it was just fun. Yeah, yeah. it was string. As cool. a kid, they're just really interesting. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I had no idea there was pictures. Yeah. Oh yeah. It, it was. It, that was the time. Like the 2000s and like from like my childhood, like 2000, 2010 to like 10 years old was like it was it. Like I was just so carefree. Like <laughs> go home, put on Lizzie McGuire. Like that was my life. That was my show. Like. <laughs> I really reminisce about those days. Like, it was simple. Times were simple then. <laughs> oh, yeah. Walk into the park with my DS, playing Pokemon yeah. on the swings. <sighs> yes. That was the life. Come home. I remember they used to have these, like, the go where it was, like, the cotton candy ones, where it was, like, half pink, half blue. I don't even know if they make those ones anymore, but, like, I used to be obsessed <laughs> with those. Coming home and, like, going to get my go was, like, the life. That was there. It was Yo Play or something like that. Like, yeah, that, that was, was the life. Yeah. yeah. We just connected on an emotional and spiritual level because <laughs> I was obsessed with Gogurts and tricks, the tricks yogurts. Yeah. They don't taste the same anymore. I'm telling you, there's a different sell them. They have like the Gogurt ones, but it is a different formula. I don't care what anybody says. The Yo Play was the best and they don't exist anymore and they don't make them like they used to. <laughs> Period. Yeah. Or maybe childhood nostalgia. <laughs> I have no idea, but they don't. Yeah. No, you're right. They, they're, they're something different. They changed them, and they did it specifically to spite us. <laughs> right. And I know this is so crazy. I used to be obsessed with mandarin oranges, and mandarin oranges do not taste the same to me anymore. Like I used to get the ones like as a kid with like you, you know, in the yeah. little cup, you just pop the it open. They don't taste the same anymore. Oh, you mean, like, the dull fruit cups. The, yeah, like yeah. the fruit cups and mandarin oranges. And I'm like so mad. You have no idea how many times I've gone to the store and bought mandarin oranges hoping that they taste like they used to and something has changed. Like have the oranges changed? What happened? <laughs> it's crazy. Like I really be thinking about this stuff at night. I know. What happened? <laughs> I kind of forgot those existed to be honest. Now I kind of want one. <laughs> I miss them. That's we'll what I'm saying. Like I miss my that. childhood. The Yoplait, the mandarin oranges cups. Like I miss that I stuff. Know. Yeah. Like, do they even make strawberry chocolate milk anymore? Milk. Like, remember I used to go to school milk and milk always milk. pick up strawberry. Yeah. I don't even see it anymore. Yeah. Ah. I still drink a lot of chocolate milk. That's one thing about me as a kid that hasn't changed. I drink an unhealthy amount of chocolate milk. Oh, okay. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. <laughs> chocolate milk is, like, the go-to at night. For me, I feel like it's just very, like, nostalgic, and it kind of just, like, calms me down. It, it calms me down, mm-hmm. you know, drinking it. Yeah. I'm kind of a chocolate milk snob now, though. Like, I go to Whole Foods, okay, and then I, like, get the ones in the glass bottle, and I try different types of, like, chocolate milk from the Whole... Like, I get it from Strauss Creamery. 
Ooh. the chocolate milk and it's so good but now it's like i have true moo and i'm like ugh, ugh, what is this <laughs> what is this swill <laughs> right i feel like i've grown up now i'm all like whole foods and stuff like i just i'm like one of those people like <laughs> how did i turn into one of those people and that's what happens when you live in la because in michigan the nearest whole food is like three hours away so I didn't shop at Whole Foods, but now that I'm in LA, I like go there all the time. Like that's like my place now. And Trader Joe's, I do love Trader Joe's. Like me and Trader Joe's are like yeah, Trader Joe's. Is yeah. Great. Maybe we just got older and more pretentious. Maybe the Go-Gurts taste the same, but maybe we've changed. Maybe it's our taste buds. I thought, I was like, maybe our it's taste our taste buds. Have aged. Like, can taste buds, like, age or change? I heard, like, old people don't, like, taste the same food anymore. Like, that's so sad. Like, imagine going old and, like, your taste buds change where, like, food doesn't taste the same anymore. I have heard that. I hope it's not true. <laughs> I think your taste buds can change. I think that's a real thing because I know a lot of people that, like, they really didn't like something in the past. And then like, as they got older, their taste buds changed and their taste changed and they started to enjoy it more. I don't know if it's, I don't know if food tastes different or if it's like a preference thing where your yeah. personal preferences change. I have no idea, but. So as our, as we get older, our taste buds, the number of taste buds we have decreases. And then the ones that we have existing also kind of shrink over time so our tastes are kind of changing because we're not tasting everything like as powerfully as we were when we were younger that's oh, so sad no, that is so sad that explains a lot though <laughs> yeah, it does that's why the gogurt's not as good yes <laughs> i mean me four years old sucking down a gogurt not realizing that that was gonna be the peak of my culinary existence Hi. Like, my mind just went, I should like, have tried everything then. Like, that was our chance. That was my chance. I, I like, should have eaten more go-gurts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I feel like I need to go to a buffet now, though, because if, it, if my taste buds are shrinking, like, that means, like, Yolo. when I, like, 10 years right now, like, yeah. who's about to taste nasty? Yeah, I Really know. nasty. Yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm going to Taco Bell. <laughs> I'm going to Taco Bell after this. <laughs> I'm going to get my Baja Blast because I know those are going to change in like 10 years. I know they are. I'm telling you. <laughs> the day that Baja Blast doesn't taste as good to me is the day that I'm done living. <laughs> oh. I'm calling it quits. That's it. Exactly. <laughs> That's the day I can't go on. <laughs> oh, I know it. And like the Fagos, like the blueberry Fago, like I know those are going to switch up on me. Like one of these days I'm going to drink it. And they're like, you know what? This doesn't taste like blueberry fago. Was it the formula or is it my taste buds shrinking? Like, come on, taste so buds. So the taste buds are basically dying slowly. What? <laughs> That's what it sounds like. <laughs> I have so much anxiety in now about all the foods that I need to eat. <laughs> it happens very, very slowly. So keep that in mind. Uh, you guys are set. <laughs> we've got some time. <laughs> we got some time. We're we good. got some time. Man, that's crazy. <laughs> I am just... I had no idea. That's crazy. So do like all old people like not like food anymore? Like how bad does food taste when they shrink? Like, like I really uh, want to know. <laughs> why do you think they're always eating like tapioca and oatmeal? I know. Why? It's true. So is it things taste worse or you just can't taste at all? I'm pretty sure it's the first one. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it might be like you're less receptive to flavors, like because things have very complex flavor profiles. And I think then you just start to, you know, notice less and less of those and, and you're not as able to taste as many flavors coming through something. You kind of get like a it's like on the color spectrum. Like if you think about all of the colors, um, as you get older, those colors start to disappear until like you're probably down to like, you know, a red, blue, yellow kind of the primaries, if that makes sense. So if you're eating like a strawberry Jolly Rancher, does it not taste like strawberry? Like what does it taste like? It becomes like that? bland. Like it's is just, it just like does it turn to cherry? Or maybe flavor? you can't distinguish like, the what flavors happens? anymore <laughs> when you're like older. Like if you have you like if you eat different color or flavor Jolly Ranchers, like you wouldn't be able to like tell maybe. which one is which. I don't know. Yeah, maybe mm -hmm. that's scary. Mm -hmm. That's kind of cool though. You can play like that one challenge, like what flavor is this? And you're like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> You can eat the, the, the bean boozled jelly beans and not notice which ones are bad. <laughs> right. Which one tastes yeah. like dog food, but which one tastes like strawberry? Yeah. I'll never know. It's an advantage too, because then like all the nasty flavors in the world, like you wouldn't be so bothered by. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. You want to play a little game before we, uh, before we skedaddle? Sure. I got a little game I want to play. Um, I, the title, it's a working title. Okay. Uh, the working title is rapid fire favorites. 
Oh. Um, but basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to name a thing and you're going to have to tell me what your favorite is as freaking quick as you can. Oh. Okay. Uh, who wants to Who wants to play first? I don't want you guys have to play it at the same time. Maybe, maybe since you're twins, it'll be the same. No, like I think we should. Play yeah. You play it at the same time? Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Okay. Good. Okay. Let's see. Let's see the twin connection if it's really real. I Let's know. see. Let's see. Okay. All right. Rapid fire favorites. Are you ready? You prepared? Never. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. First one. Milkshake flavor. Strawberry. Peanut butter. Oatmeal. Vanilla. Chocolate. You only have to say one. Oh, I <laughs> you only have to say one. Just like what your favorite. Is. I appreciate the commitment, though. I appreciate the commitment. Let me just go boom, boom, boom. No, no, no. <laughs> you threw me off. Okay, that was my bad. Okay. No, that's okay. I appreciate how many answers you gave me. That was great. But yeah, you only have to say one. I don't know if oatmeal is even like a milkshake flavor, so I don't know where that came. From. Wait, you said oatmeal? <laughs> I I literally thought like. Oatmeal like could be a flavor, but at the same time, I was like, that just like came randomly to my head. I, I don't really know where that came from. <laughs> I'll let it slide this time. <laughs> I'll let it slide this time. All right. You understand the way the game is played. Are you ready for round two? Yeah, I'm ready for round two. All right. Childhood cartoon. Rugrats. <sighs> I don't mean Lizzie McGuire, but that was a, that was like that's a not cartoon. a cartoon. It was for like the first ten seconds. Okay, because she had that true. cartoon intro. Okay, gotcha. I'll allow it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll allow it. Uh, okay, Rugrats and Lizzie McGuire. That's pretty good. First yeah, seconds. the first ten seconds of Lizzie McGuire. <laughs> That's, it must have been a pretty good 10 seconds for it to be your favorite. It's the intro. <laughs> the intro song, okay, is in cartoon. <laughs> oh, it's a great intro song. All right, round three. The fi Well, no, I'm going to do a fourth round since I feel like I didn't explain it well enough. So we're, this is round three, and we'll have one more round after this. But round three, athleisure brand. Lululemon. Ugh, probably Lululemon too. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's the correct answer. <laughs> Not that there was a right answer, but that's the correct. I love Lululemon. Who does it? Even goats like Lululemon. Like yeah. at this point, it's goat approved. It's goat approved. approved. It is goat yoga approved. They lasted through our goat yoga sesh. It so. kept us like good. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, what more do you need? <laughs> All right, the final round. Taco Bell menu item. Baja Blast. Probably just like a plain taco. I don't know. How, like, like, how could taco. You a taco? like if you had to order one thing at Taco Bell, how could you not order a taco? Well, you got to get the hot sauce packets. Like the, without the hot sauce, hot sauce packet, it's not even a taco. I would just so. say like the 99 cent taco, like just the normal taco. taco. They are good. <laughs> I disagree with plain taco. Not even like Doritos Locos. <laughs> with the hot sauce with though. The sauce. I can yeah. see that. A lot of the hot sauce. Like I used to get like 10 packets and just squeeze all like 10 yeah. in there. And then yeah. Fire sauce is really good. I will say there were many a nights in high school when I was on my way home from school and I stopped and got a taco 12 pack just for me to enjoy throughout the evening. So that's that's understandable. My Personally, you didn't ask me, but I love a good quesarito. Oh, I was going to say crunch wrap too. Those yeah. are good. Crunch wrap. Dude, everything at Taco Bell is so good. Yeah, I know. They're a little Cinnabon. I don't know if you ever got them at your taco. I was like overly the obsessed. <laughs> Oh, they're so good. They're yeah. warm and then you eat it and they just like squirt out in your mouth. Like, they're I amazing. was obsessed. It's the perfect eating experience. Anything that creams in my mouth, whoo, <laughs> sign me up. Good. It was perfect. Like, that's like the perfect combo. I, I think that there's nothing else better than that. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Sarah and Leah, thank you so much. The Talabi twins. Thank you so much for being on. Yes, it was yes. so fun. Thank, thank you so us. much. And we definitely are going to do that goat yoga. Yeah. So. Yeah. Let's freaking do yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> definitely. Um, uh, so, can we talk again sometime? I guess if we're going to do goat yoga, but like, I want to be friends. Let's, Let's hang out. Right. Let's be yes, friends. Yes, exactly. We can definitely. go get Cinnabons, a little one from Taco Bell. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. That's what I need. That's what I need. Please plug yourselves. Tell everyone where they can find you and all the cool stuff that, that you're doing. On Instagram, the Sarah Talabi, Leah Marie Talabi. On TikTok, it's Talabi Twins. On YouTube, it's Talabi Twins. On Twitter, it's Talabi Twins. And in real life, it's Talabi Twins. So, so yes. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much for being on. Everybody, please check them out. They're doing amazing stuff. They're super talented, super, super fun to <laughs> hang out with. 
I had such a great time. Thank you so much for being on. Take care. Everybody, that was the Talabi twins, Leah and Sarah. They were so amazing. So much fun. Ah, such great guests. We had a great time. Please do go follow all of their socials. If you just Google the Talabi twins, all of it will pop up. Um, But yeah, go check out what they're doing. It's great stuff. A lot of really cool things. Uh, Jamie, how do you think that went? I think that was went really well. Like they were both super cool. And from the jump, they were super down with just like any question you threw at them. And I did like like, you know, getting into those random parts of like, oh, like what about the taste buds or what about these things? Like I liked that their minds went there because I always think those kinds of things. Yeah, I think I learned more on that episode than I have ever learned before. Maybe. I don't remember anything that (laughs) I've learned from before. Amnesia. I have really bad memory. Like, I think it might be like a problem, actually, because I can't remember anything. Anyway, I had a great time. That was a ton of fun. I thought they were amazing. They were so much fun. I want to hang out with them. Yeah. And and they do really incredible things. Yes. For the world. They're like good people. They're like really good people, which is always a bonus, you know? Because sometimes you're like, oh, this is a cool person, but they're kind of a piece of crap. I don't want to do no support in them. But they are doing so many amazing things, making like a real positive impact, which is so cool. And they're just really nice and funny and sweet. And it was great. Plus, I learned more about the twin magic. Yes. And the the twin telepathy. And one day I'm going to crack the code and unlock the secrets of how to clone myself. And then I too will have a twin. And we will take over. Burbank, California. (laughs) Imagine a podcast of you and your clone. (laughs) Me just talking. That's the show, Jamie. I know, but like. That's me talking to myself. That's the show. But then imagine seeing it. Oh, man. The energy of that podcast. Just edit it. Just edit an episode. I'll, I'll talk both parts. You edit me in there. We can like splice it together and I'll talk to myself. I'll do it for like four hours. And everyone will stop following the show and unsubscribe. (laughs) Please don't unsubscribe. Um, But if you do want to listen to something other than me, uh, because you probably do at this point, please go check out A Hot Dog is a Sandwich. My friends, Josh and Nicole from over yonder in the kitchen, they have their own show uh, called A Hot Dog is a Sandwich. And they talk about really cool, fun food debates. They talk about food theory. They talk about what kind of foods they like. And they have a lot of great opinions because they're both very smart and very talented chefs. Um, So please go check it out. A hot dog is a sandwich. It's a ton of fun. They're great. I love them. They're like a couple of my best friends. So please go support them. Check out their show. It's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. Um, And thank you as always for listening to Trevor Talks Too Much, the show where I, Trevor, talk too much. Uh, Listen every Tuesday, wherever you get your podcast, whether that's Spotify or Apple Music, I don't know what voice this is. It's a little bit of uh, maybe like Jim Carrey in the mask, but like not good. <laughs> it's like that with like a hint of Nicolas Cage. Nicolas Cage? From like uh, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. younger Raising Arizona steal. days. The Declaration of Independence. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, listen every Tuesday, wherever you get your podcast. I don't know if that'll stand. Uh, check out the video version every Monday on YouTube.com slash Trevor Talks Too Much. Uh, and leave a review. Or comment or whatever. Let me know how much talking I need to do. Let me know if you want more, if you want less, if it's just right. Uh, and, you know, follow all the other mythical stuff. We got the the, the TikToks. We got the uh, the Instagrams. We're doing all sorts of stuff. Check me out, Twitter and Instagram, if you want. If you want more, you know, unhinged thoughts. That's usually where you can find them. Um, and also check out our Mythical Pods TikTok. We're posting TikTok, 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 TikTok clips on the Mythical Pods from all of our podcasts. There's so many of them. We're posting TikTok clips. Funny stuff. So please go check all that out. And uh, yeah, I'll end you with this impression of a capybara doing the Cupid Shuffle. That was, you know, to the right, to the right, to the left. That was his, like the capybara moving. Oh, uh, okay. But then like, what would a capybara, do you know what a capybara sounds like? I don't, but I would imagine something like <laughs> That's what I would imagine. They look like they have that kind of a kind of a range. Yeah, it's the teeth, huh? Of a cappy bar. I'm gonna superimpose that. I'm gonna find the sound and I'll superimpose it over the that part. 
cool. Well, I'll see you all next week. <laughs>